Well, good morning once again. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, if you'll be finding Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, that's where we're going to begin. I have to be honest with you this morning. This is the first time as your pastor I've ever stood in front of you to preach the Word of God that I haven't fully prepared. I've had a rough week, but that's no excuse. Uh, I think God's trying to tell me not to go uh, east. Uh, the last time we went down there, I wound up in the hospital four days, and this time, same thing hit me, but it hit me on the way home, so I'm hoping it passes pretty quick, but it's uh, I'm a little weak this morning, so uh, I didn't get to spend my time here alone this morning, But and I almost, I had a brother ready to come and preach, but Something just kept rolling through my mind and said, in your weakness, my strength will be revealed. So I'm going to share with you what he put on my heart. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to do something a little different this morning. I'm going to pray before we start. Uh, I just feel like I really need to, so if you would, just pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your love, your understanding. Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'd be with us this morning, Lord. And Lord, I, I ask before I preach your word, Lord, that you'd forgive me of my sins, Lord. Forgive me of my anger, God. Forgive me of my pride. God, just wash me clean this morning. And Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you rise up in me. And that the words that come from this vessel, Lord, be from you, Lord, not me. And I pray that you touch us, Lord, and open up the ears of our hearts and our minds. And God, speak directly to us, Lord, and give us the wisdom, Lord, to hear you and follow you. And God, I pray today that we leave here today changed, Lord. I pray that we leave here today, Lord, with a desire, with a fire inside us, Lord, to live for you, Lord, and to reach others and tell them about you. God, I just pray that your will be done today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This message come to me, this may shock you, watching the news. Uh, that's a good way, as I tell you all the time, to remind me I need to up my blood pressure medicine is to watch the news. I, 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 I get mad, but it's a righteous anger because I see people mocking God, claiming his name, and say, you know, claiming the term Christianity. And I'm going to call one man out by name because he is calling our God out by name. So I'm going to call him out by name. And his name is Gavin Newsom. He is the governor of California. And he claims to be Irish Catholic. I'm not familiar with Irish Catholic, but evidently it's not Christian if they're all like him. He wants to put up billboards and say that if, you, if your state doesn't allow an abortion, come out here. We love you. And then right behind that, he, he says, Jesus loves all. What about that baby? Yes. Folks, you may, not, you may not have been in church long. You may not know much about the word of God, but I know, I, I guarantee you one thing you know, and that's murder's wrong. Murder's wrong in God's eyes. Well, he, if you didn't know this, I'm going to give you a little bit of history. He had just been elected governor of California. He hadn't been there long. And this was back when the younger Bush, uh, not, not H, not H, but the other one. And he had made a statement that they were going to try to pass an amendment or something to protect marriage. So... Governor Newsom decided that he would perform the first same-sex marriage in California. And they read the headlines this week, and this is in the past, but when I heard the headlines, it, folks, it just made my spine run up and down. It said, Irish Catholic governor. Now, what are they basically saying right there? They are saying, Christian governor performs same-sex, first same-sex marriage. May I tell you with that with certainty, that man is not a Christian. And who he is representing is not my God. 
but then it began, God began to run this through my mind. I like to study the enemy. I like to see what the enemy... Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying worship Satan. No, no. I like to know what the enemy's up to. And I'll give you... This is just kind of how I'm wired when the kids would play ball. If I saw a team that they were going to play, I would watch that team and I'd look for tendencies or weakness, you know, and, and I'd tell them, hey, hey, the point guard, they, don't, they, they can't use their left hand, you know, make them go this way. I watch what the other side done. I, I like to study it. Well, folks, I like to see what Satan's trying to do. And I can tell you today, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I listen to a lot of things. I listen to a lot of false doctrine to see what they're trying to teach, what, how they're trying to attack words, the word of God. And here's the number one thing they're trying to do. They're trying to soften the word of God. They're trying to uh, basically say that it's not what it says, that you can interpret it how you want to. You can do that. And you can go to hell too. You can split the gates of hell wide open. Folks, this word the parts of it that are important, which is all of it, from Genesis to Revelation, some of it is easier to understand than other. Amen? But did you know if we pray for wisdom and we read and we study, he'll open our eyes to all of it. Amen? Sometimes we got to get in there and we got to dig and we got to search. And there's some things we can read through and Brother Kevin may take it a little different than I take it. And that's okay. But you got to understand what they're trying to do is they're trying to justify their sin. That is it in a nutshell. They're trying to justify the sin in their life by saying that the Word of God doesn't condemn it. Folks, I've got, I've got good news and bad news for you. There is not a sin in this world that you've committed in your lifetime. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care. As bad as you can think, God will forgive it. And God will wash it away. But you've got to ask him, and you've got to mean it. You've got to repent. But you, I just want to ask you this morning, if we had a bake sale up here, could you tell if you walked up here and looked at the cakes if someone used the right ingredients or not? Could you if you started tasting it? <laughs> what if somebody used a cup of salt in their cake instead of a cup of sugar? You'd tell pretty quick, wouldn't you? Can you just tell by looking at me whether I'm saved or not? Neither can I you. Now, I firmly believe if we're around each other enough, we'll see the fruits. And you'll know. You know, if you go to school with somebody, or you work with somebody, you're around somebody, you'll see the fruits of God. Now, you meet them in passing. Folks, I learned this from my 30 years in law enforcement. People can deceive you especially if you're there for a brief period of time. But you see, if you're around somebody very long, I firmly believe in my heart, you'll see the fruits of God. But you see, there's so many today with bumper stickers, posts on Facebook, sitting in pews, singing the hymns, and on the outside, they look the part. But there's something missing. There's something missing on the inside. The most important thing is missing and now folks don't misunderstand me because you those of you that have been here very long you know how I stand on this does a Christian have to go to church no but they absolutely should you can't tell me a reason why they wouldn't they say well I don't like the preacher well guess what there's another one down the road but you can go to church every day of your life and still split the gates of hell wide open. You can sing the songs like a songbird. You can sound beautiful. You can teach Sunday school. You can preach the word of God and still split the gates of hell wide open. What's missing? And I got to thinking as I heard this about all these people claiming, you know, but you notice... <laughs> If you listen carefully to people very long, you will hear the truth, even when they're lying to you. You can ask my wife. I, I was trained in that. So if, if I study you very long, I can tell whether you're lying or not. Kids love that. They love that, that I had that training. But if you listen to what somebody really says, they will tell you the truth. 
If you listen to somebody, I say, well, I'm being as honest as I can be. <laughs> what they're really saying is I'm being as honest as I can be without getting in trouble. They're not finishing the sentence. But you see, as I, as I thought about this governor who claimed the title of Christianity, folks, it goes a lot, lot, lot deeper than that. There's a lot of people today claiming the tag of Christianity that don't know Jesus. And here's the problem with that. All this is on the outside. They looked apart. The but what are they missing? You see, it's not the first time this has happened. And if you will turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4, when you find that, if you would stand this morning to honor the reading of God's word. Hebrews chapter 4, and I'm going to start in verse number 1. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left, of, left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as to them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for this opportunity to be here. And God, I just pray this morning that you'd speak to us this morning, open up our ears and our hearts, and God, speak the truth to us this morning and help us leave here today and represent you and be Christ-like in all of, our, all of our actions, God, and help us, Lord, lead the lost to you. And in Jesus' name, his church prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, part of this... I'm going to have to take a drink. This may end the sermon really early, but if it does, I'm sorry. I hadn't ate drink, haven't ate and drank much in two days, but I'm, I need a drink right now. Okay. Notice what it says. For unto us, this is the author of Hebrews. So this is a Christian. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. So that is a distinction. That means believer, unbeliever. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So both sides heard the gospel. But the word preached did not profit them, the lost. Why is that? Because it was not mixed with faith. Folks, you want to know what's missing in today in, in all those circumstances we talked about? And in in those preachers that are preaching the word of God today, and in, in those people that are sitting in the pews today that, that don't know, it's faith. It's faith. Folks, you either believe God is who he is, or you don't. And I am sick of people saying they believe in God, but their lives don't back it up. Don't say it if you don't believe it. Because, folks, what good does it do for me to fool Junior Rudder? Is he, does he punch my ticket to heaven or hell? Absolutely not. Junior could think I'm the godless man. He knows that I walk on water. And folks, I go home and live like hell. I don't ever think, I don't read my Bible. I don't pray. I live a lustful, nasty life. I, but I hide it from him. But guess what happens to me when I die? I split the gates of hell wide open. And Junior may spend eternity in heaven walking around looking for me. No, he wouldn't because you know why? I'd be erased from his memory. But you see, part of this, why this grabs me so personally, you know my testimony. You know about my dad. That crushing weight. When I thought that he had died and went to hell because I would not share the gospel with him, I told you that's what drove me to preach, and I told you I, that's, that's a feeling that I don't want anybody ever to have in their life. But it did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. That means, folks, <laughs> there's more to it than this hearing the word. I've, I've had some recent interactions with people that absolutely blew my mind. People had been in church 70, 70 years or more, 
didn't know the word of God. Folks, I got a problem with that. We're supposed to be growing, amen? I'll be the first one to tell you. I'm your pastor, and I'm embarrassed to admit this, but folks, I don't know this word of God like I should. But I can tell you one thing. I know it better than I did last year. And I want to know it better tomorrow than I did today, amen? And there's only one way we can do that, and how's that? That's open it up and read it. That's open it up and study it. That's open, and, you know, James 1.5, ask for that wisdom, and God will grant it to you. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Again, I hate to admit this to you, but did you know there's some, there has been mornings in my life when I woke up and I read the Bible and shut it? Five minutes later, I couldn't tell you what I read. I just did it. More out of habit than anything else. I'm ashamed of that. But, folks, I'm going to tell you something. God pricked me in the heart. And, folks, if I find myself drifting now, I will stop. Stop, refocus, and get back to it. But my greatest fear, as like this talked about, for we which have believed do enter into rest. Let me, let me, there's a word that I want to interchange here if it's okay with you. Peace. Amen. Enter into peace. As I have sworn in my wrath that they shall enter into my peace, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Folks, if I could pray one thing for you. If this was the last Sunday that I ever got to talk to you, if, this, if I was leaving and I wanted to leave one thing to you, folks, don't seek silver and gold. Don't seek the things that perish. Seek the everlasting. And, folks, that one word that I want every one of you to have with your, in your marriages, in your children, in your grandchildren, in your homes, is peace. Folks, if you can have peace, there's nothing greater. Amen? Because the rest of it, if money can buy it, folks, it'll, it can be destroyed. Amen? But I'm looking to a treasure that cannot be bought. I'm looking to a treasure that was paid for for you and me on a cross by our Savior, Jesus Christ. But you see, there's so many today. They go to church, they've been baptized, they tithe. But when they meet him, you notice when I said when they meet him, He'll say, depart from me. Folks, if when you die, if that's when you meet Jesus, you're in trouble. I met Jesus Christ on Highway 124, driving my truck. With tears streaming down my eyes, I realized what a wretch I was. And I tell everybody, This world paints a picture. It's so nasty. Once you get saved and once you get God in your life, you look and see what they do. It's just nasty. And I tell everybody, I said, do you want to change the way a man looks at a woman? Let him have a daughter. Folks, that's the best thing God can do for any man because it changes. Because there's a song my wife played for me the other day. She's somebody's daughter. And guess what? You're somebody's son if you're a man. You're God's daughter. You're God's son. And oh, how we've messed it up. But you see, I want to tell you how you get faith this morning. There's two steps, and we're going to talk about them, and I'm going to give you scripture to back them up. But here in the Word, that's the first step. I hear so many people claim Christianity, but they never open the book. Adrian Rogers always said that if your faith wouldn't get you to church, he'd doubt that your faith would get you to heaven. I'm going to tell you, if your faith won't open up the book, I doubt your faith's going to get you to heaven. It's like life is a test. And folks, he gave us the book. He gave us the answers. But sometimes we don't like the answers. Sometimes I don't. Because I heard y'all talking to Sunday school this morning. Sometimes I'm my own worst problem. Amen? And yes, I still have a temper. Children, with an amen. And, but you know what I do now? I repent of it. And I ask for forgiveness. You can ask them sometime about chilies in Birmingham, Alabama, and they'll have a really good story for you. But used to it wouldn't bother me. 
but now it does. But you see, I can't make you have faith. Your spouse can't make you have faith. Your parents can't make you have faith. That is a decision that you have to make yourself. And folks, I've talked to a lot of people over, over my career. They call and say, do I get them out of jail or do I leave them? I say, leave them. I said, rock bottom is a different level for all of us. But all of us have got to get to rock bottom before we ever reach up. But you see, another way of saying faith is believing in Jesus. And when you say believe in Jesus, please hear me this morning. There's more to it than just saying I believe in Jesus because even the demons believed in Jesus, but they didn't go to heaven. See, they... I, help me, God, to say what you want me to say. You've got to decide it in your heart. And folks, I believe... I believe, this is just my personal belief, I believe you've got to be heartbroken. I believe you've got to be crushed because the Bible says he's close to those that are crushed with a contrite spirit. He saves those of a contrite spirit. That means we're crushed. It means we, we're, we're remorseful. We don't want it anymore. Just saying it, though, it won't cut it. If we truly believe, we live it. Amen? And I know there's people that will attack this preaching this morning and saying that's works preaching. It's not works preaching, folks. You cannot work your way into heaven. There's nothing you can do to work to earn your way into heaven. You cannot do that. Only through the blood of Jesus Christ. But folks, listen to me. Once you acknowledge that and once you accept that and once you believe that, your life changes. If it didn't change, folks, you didn't meet him. And I know there's some that don't like that. Believe me, I hear them. They tell me they don't like it. But, folks, it's true. I tried it both ways. I tried it lip service at 13 years of age. And then I went on living like hell through my life. And I wasn't convicted of my sin. Folks, I was not saved because all I had done was said some words that a preacher told me to say. And then... Folks, you don't have to get saved in church. It's a good place to get saved, but so is a deer stand, so is a tractor. Anywhere is a good place to get saved. I got saved in a truck, and there was no preacher with me that day. But here's the thing. You can ask my wife. I changed. Not because on my own. I changed because the Holy Spirit indwelt me and gave me the strength to do the things that I couldn't do on my own. Amen? So how do we get faith? Number one, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If you want faith, folks, here's the first thing you do. Crack open the book. Read it. Study it. You know, I've said a lot of times, I, and I'm guilty of this, okay? I'm not picking on you. But what walks downstairs a loner in pairs and makes a slinkity sound? Slinky! Hey, how about two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese? All right! Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. Yep. I'm guilty. Folks, when I was young... Me and my brother, we used to have baseball cards, and we'd play a game. We had it all worked out. Did you know I could read the back of every baseball card, and I knew the stats on the back of every card? You could just say the name, and I could tell you the stats. But I couldn't have told you what Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1 said. Oh, I wish I could. And you know what? I have nobody to blame but myself. Because if I want that, 
and I pursue that enough, God will give it to me. Amen? So we've got to hear the word of God. Now, I caution you. There is a lot of preaching going on today that's not the word of God. And I will tell you this. I, I, false prophets have been around a long time. Do you know what false prophets are from God? Did you know God actually sends false prophets? You know why he sends false prophets? To give the people what they want. Because that's what they're wanting to hear. The Bible says in the end they will have itching ears. Folks, that means tickle me. Tell me what I want. You know, make me feel good. I'm not a motivational speaker. I hope and pray I am a preacher of his word. And sometimes, I can tell by the looks on your faces, sometimes you don't like what it says. And some of you even throw stuff at me. But the point is, where we've dropped the ball and where we have failed is we no longer know God's word the way we should. So then the false teaching and preaching can come in and we accept it. We had to go through the secret service, secret service training on counterfeit money to teach us how to find counterfeit money. Any of you ever been to PDQ and give the girl or whoever behind the counter and you see them hold it up? They're messing with you, okay? They don't know if that's counterfeit or not. You know how you're trained to spot a counterfeit? You have the original in your hand over and over and over and over so you know what the real thing feels like. Folks, you know how you avoid false prophet? You have the real thing in your hand over and over and over. So when that false prophet comes out, you know immediately, hey, something's wrong right here, and you get up and you leave. Amen? So... Second part, with hearing the word, and by hearing the word, that don't mean coming here and hearing me preach on Sunday. That's part of it. But that means Monday through Saturday, you're reading it at home too. The second thing, and this is, this is where the rubber meets the road. With everything in you, you must believe he is who he says he is. And I want to show you in scripture. He says he's the son of God. Jesus Christ says he and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. He says in the beginning that they made man in their image. Jesus Christ said while he was here, I have come basically to pay our debt. He died on that cross. Now, if you read the Bible, it says that on the third day he rose. He was seen of many people. It was, it's written down. I always use this as, a, as an example, and I don't want you to answer this morning, but this is the place where you've got to reach in your heart. You've heard the story of when Moses led the children out of Egypt and they come to the Red Sea. Do you really believe, do you really believe that he parted the waters? Do you really believe that they walked through on dry ground? And then do you really believe that he closed the waters up on the Egyptian army and drowned them? That's a pretty big miracle, amen? I just came from what Kenneth calls the big pond. There's a lot of water down there. Do you believe if God wanted to, he could part that and let us walk through on dry land? I pray you do. Because if you do, that means we'll live our life different than somebody that don't. Hear me now. Even when the doctor gives us the news that ain't good, we'll live our life different than the ones that don't believe. Amen? Because why? This is not our home. Amen? We're just passing through. You see, Pontius Pilate, Herod, Judas, 
They heard the word of God. But they decided they didn't believe Jesus was who he said he was. Peter believed he was. Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonas, for man has not revealed this to you. But you see, that's a decision I wish I could make for every one of you. I can't. And I know there's people sitting in this room that wish they could make it for their children and their grandchildren or your parents, but you can't. But what you can do is pray and live a life that shows them you believe with everything in you that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. Look at your life. Is faith missing? Does your life show that you believe he is the Son of God? I want to close with this because he won't accept anything less than your faith. Amen. There is one sin that God cannot forgive. Unbelief. If you don't believe, he can't forgive that. But if you can believe any sin you've ever committed, he'll wash away if you ask him. But I thought, God, if you look down at this world today, and saw the likes of some of these famous entertainers claiming Christ's name and then living the way they do, some of these government officials claiming Christ's name and passing the laws that they pass, what would you say, God? And I believe he'd say the same thing he said in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Folks, if you don't know what he says, that's not an excuse. Open the book. If you do know what it says, live by it. Live by it. I don't care what's happened in your life. Tomorrow's a new day. If you want to change, if you want something different, in this world Jesus Christ died on a cross for you and I believe and I stand here today behind this pulpit with the, on the authority of God's word that Jesus Christ is who he says he is he is the son of God and his blood is enough to cleanse us from our sins but folks it does require that we believe in him with everything that we have in us if you would stand with me all over this building I just want to ask you the most, very, the most important question anybody could ever ask you. Like I said, Judas, Pontius Pilate, Herod, they all had to answer this question. So did Peter, so did John, so did Paul, so do you. Do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And when I ask that, have you made him the Lord of your life? Have you asked him into your heart to forgive you of your sins? And are you walking in his path? If you have not, friend, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is if you die right now, you're going to hell. But the good news is you're still alive and you can still make him the Lord of your life. I can't tell you when you draw your last breath. I can't tell you how many days you have left. All I can tell you is if he's knocking on your heart's door right now, I strongly encourage you not to turn away. If you have any need in your life today and you need prayer, we'll pray with you today and we'll believe. 